If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. sha na 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 Hey, 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 send me the gold stuff. Goodbye. Gold stuff. <laughs> when Adam sings it, yeah. I like it now, dude. <laughs> yeah, I like it too. It's... It makes me feel affectionate. <laughs> oh, it's like a warm hug. No, yeah. Shauna, our girl from Organifi. We got into some good conversations today. Yeah, or no, it, funny, dude. fun so conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, no, sh- that's the wrong timing. No, I was going to say, our girl Shauna sent us one container of the gold. I saw you fucking he took it. He finagled it. Uh, She's uh, sending more. She's sending more. Oh, you okay, good. Yeah, but it's a gold juice. Did you try it yet? Fucking love it. Really? Love it. It's got... What's all, yeah, what's all in it? Dude, so it's it got, like you know, gold. ginger, turmeric, uh, reishi. It's got turmeric in it? It tastes tail. good? Yeah. Dude, it tastes, it tastes like... I it's like got turmeric. like a caramel. Oh, you like the taste of turmeric? It's great. No, no, it's got like a caramel flavor turmeric to it. Turmeric tastes like fucking yeah. dirt and roots. So By itself? Yeah. This, yeah. I swear to God, it tastes I good. mix it. But it's got, it's like anti-inflammatory relaxing, so you're supposed to drink it at night. I've been taking it for the past, like, few days. I'll let you know if I notice anything with inflammation. Uh, with that, oh, uh, I might as well mention that Organifi uh, Shop dot com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump, get a discount. Um, all right, so we'll start the intro. So we had some <laughs> we had some fun conversations. We did. Today. We so did. for the first, Justin, Sal, and I in this episode of Mind fun. Pump. Uh, for the first 20 minutes, we had some regular conversation. <laughs> Adam, Justin, myself, we talked about- Hey, that's all I want you to change. I just want yeah. you to change with regular, fun, crazy, right. scary, we talk- interesting. Crazy, sexy, Just change cool. the verb. We talked about Justin's personality quirks. Mm, so quirky. And his initial distrust of me. Uh, I still I still liked you, dude. You Don't fucker. get yourself. Then Don't we talked yourself. about a transgender woman shattering weightlifting records bullshit and the elephant in the room whoa and then we also talked about the origin of qua oh yeah qua qua this is a this is a crazy episode we got into some deeper shit we, we did we touched we did. on steroids today yeah. we, we touched on a few quite a few things. so the first stretching our legs out so the first question was um someone wants to know how do you build a following on social media without becoming consumed it's like Justin can never go to the bathroom without his phone. You know. So I feel like that question was well, directed towards him. When I do all my work. The second question was periodization. <laughs> is it better to do it in this in within the same week or do it for weeks on end? In other words, stay in a phase for a few weeks versus doing it, uh, you know, changing your workouts every single time. Our maps programs tend to be periodized uh, for weeks on end. We explain why in this episode. The next question was uh, are we familiar with Gretchen Rubin's personality? framework uh, uh none of us were yeah and uh, we weren't but justin brought it up yeah. and it turns out i'm a questioner you're what hey don't forget when you answer the first question about the social media being consumed you're talking about your your uh reishi with force oh i love that you, yes yeah. uh another one of our Make sponsors sure you plug our guys i love their reishi drink at night very relaxing you can get a discount with them if you go to four spell it out f-o-u-r sigmatic.com forward slash mind pump use the code Mind pump at checkout for a discount. And then the following, the, the last question, excuse me, was how would you alter the frequency of our MAPS programs if you started to take anabolic steroids? Does it change anything? It changes everything. Right. <laughs> also, uh, this is the last time ever. It's the final month. We're going to do this, right? Just ever. Right now, for $97, you can pay it once and you have lifetime access to our private forum. It's a great resource. For fitness information, it's a great place for support. It's also a great place for funny memes and studies, and it's basically a reflection for of the show. For as long as Doug lives. It's, yeah. <laughs> for his, yeah, he'll be alive for Because, yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> he's the healthiest yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, $97, you pay it once, you're in there for life. After this month, next year, talk, we're talking about January 2018, you're going to have to pay that annually. So you'll pay 97 and then you'll have to, and then you'll play every single year. So this is a lifetime, not anally. Yeah, you pay it once; it's <laughs> lifetime. He's been wanting to say that. I all know. Morning. I, I, I keep on? trying to trip him up. You 90, tell us something. Ninety-seven dollars once, never have to pay it again. This is your last time to do it. Go to mindpumpmedia.com. Also, if you enroll in any of our maps programs or bundles, you'll get an offer on the spot to get fifty percent off the price of the forum. On top of it, awesome stuff going on right now mindpumpmedia.com Merry Christmas Let's take care of that cold Sal You know what's funny is that uh, all of us are kind of like this to an extent right we don't like 
Like we don't like being told what to do at that all. That too, right? <laughs> but one hundred percent. Justin, right. yeah. wow, like, <laughs> like a lot. It's so bad. You think he's the worst? Huh? Oh, the worst. He's so bad that if you want him to do something, tell him to not do it, and he will literally do it yep. because you told him not to. God damn it! Like, I, I hate that you guys know that. It's so funny. It's like such oh, ammo I, the best me. was. I still the best you, was at you, the work, you work for me for years. I yeah. so know. I told Sal all the time. I like, relax. I know Justin's personality. <laughs> yeah. He'll be fine. Like how many times did I tell you that yeah. before? Right? Just the, relax. The best was at the airport. That one time when we were getting in line. Oh. To- <laughs> you guys totally manipulated me. I was getting pissed. That was hilarious. Oh, man. He was, we were getting in line to get, uh, you know, to, to go through the line and get checked or whatever. And for whatever reason, it's turned into this thing where let's see you can pick the, fastest the faster line. line. Yeah. So far, I've lost every time. I don't know. Adam got like some magic. <laughs> like he just picks the right line. I always get the slow line, even if it's short. Yeah. So anyway, Adam pick, gets in line and Justin goes right behind him. Right? Yeah, so. but I say something to him right away. I was like, Justin, this is the line. That's, yeah, I yeah. tell him. I say, Justin, like, this is the line that's going to go yeah, faster. Yeah, you're probably right. So he's yeah. like, all right, all right, cool. So he gets in line. I'm like, God, Justin, he's got to do what he tells you. <laughs> <laughs> It like so, is a seed that just like oh, grew. bro, it totally did. Because oh, then man. he then he started to go back, and he's like standing in the middle of the I'm two like, lines. Ah, <laughs> so I don't want to. I don't want to like make Sal right about this. <laughs> so then he starts to come over that. to my. He comes over to my line, and then Adam's like, "Oh, are they gonna do what Sal tells you?" And then he's like stuck. <laughs> like he's like, "What do I do?" <laughs> Dude, it was the funniest. Is there a middle lane? Oh, it was shit. the funniest. Oh, lesson. Oh, it was shit. A, it, uh, something else about you, Justin. That I was. So I listened to. I don't know what episode number it was. The one where we talked about where your son got uh, was took. The, your, your his cousin's toys. Oh uh, yeah, was like the, the burglar six, maneuver. Is it six fifty four? Yeah. Doug, my, maybe my little burglar. I don't know. I think it's one of those. Yeah, anyway. one of the last ones. So uh, I was listening to it, and uh, I realized like how much it actually bothered. It, it like really, really bothered you. Oh, I could totally pick up on that. Yeah, and yeah. It, it, you could but, tell like, because it's his son, right? So you identify like it's. You, I bet you feel like you're stealing yourself. Yeah. because It's your kid. Well, right? it just goes to show. That's totally what I felt like. It just one hundred percent. It just goes to show you the level, like how much. Justin values integrity so much so that something small like a kid like kids do that all the time right right? and that he can't control and yeah and and, but you to you it was like fundamentally like like this thing down a chalkboard yeah Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to the episode in the car on the way here and I was like oh shit which is I mean that's a good sign I mean when you're when you're a you know a man that values integrity so much that you know, the smallest, you know, lack of integrity for you is a big deal. Well, it's also because I think he's a, one of those parents, and I think some parents are incredible at this and some of them not so much. He looks at his kid like it's a direct reflection of himself. Mm-hmm. And I feel like some parents just aren't that way. I think some yeah. parents are just like, oh, they're going to be who they are going to be and blah, blah, blah. Everyone finds their but own just, way. He just values it so much. Like, uh, you know, I feel like, um, I know when we first met, you know, because I'm a fast talker, right? So I talk a lot and fast. Whatever. I know you told me this afterwards. You, you looked at me, you're like, I don't trust this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's <laughs> such a slick talker. Yeah. yeah. And because, I mean, you value honesty so much that, like, if somebody even, you know, bullshits a little bit or whatever, you feel that way. Like, I'm like, done with them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Do you remember if it's cool. like to my detriment, too, right? It's a strength and a weakness, you know? Well, well but it's also, it's also you're a good person. Like, mm. you know, when I hear something like that, I'm like, fuck, this is somebody you could trust to the grave. You know what I mean? Do you do you think it, do you how long do you think it took you to warm up to each of us? Who was it harder, me or him? Do you remember? Well, yeah, he Sal. For yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I was more open because I was like, I was like, teach me your ways. You know, I was like yeah. really like looking up to you coming into the industry because I was like, I came in with like total like greenhorn. Like I I trained myself, but I realized quickly I was like, I had no no shit. You know, I don't know how to train people. And like uh, coach, uh, like your average person. So I think I was just like, whenever I'm going into something like that, that's like a monumental shift in like, it's an industry I don't know anything about. Right. I'm not the kind of person that's going to come in with any kind of pride at all. Like I just can't do it. That makes sense. That makes sense. So totally more open-minded. But open-minded with you, Sal, I'm kind of like, okay, you know, this guy. I see. What's he all about? You know, (laughs) because- He's got, he's, got his, he's got guys. his system. You know, we were working on something, you know. <laughs> he's really quick, like, ha, ah, you know, he's he's coming at me fast and hot. And I'm like, slow down, pal. You know, I just met you. Yeah. So that kind of was the vibe. I wasn't trying to sleep with you. If I, if I was, I would have slowed down. Well, listen, I don't like it manipulated yeah, I know, I know. into doing weird things. You know? so my, all my flags are coming out. Yeah, that's so no, funny. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I do yeah. talk. I really want to do that thing with Doug. No, I like to. I want to do like that. You. The Doug scenarios. I think it would oh, be. Oh, he picks the yeah. scenarios. You know what would be funny too is maybe maybe we even have some of our forum. 
uh, give suggestions, and maybe we can even pull from them. So Taylor can make some up. So yeah. what this is is basically, you know, we would someone would be interviewing Doug and would ask him in these fall in the following scenarios, who would you rather have with you between Adam? You know, no, you, you can only bring one with you. Yeah, only bring one. Yeah, yeah. Here's your scenario. You yeah, can only like, bring okay, one. Okay, you got to go into a nightclub. You have to get a girl's phone number, or you know, you're, you're gonna get in a gang fight, or you know, whatever. Right. And he has to pick one of us. <laughs> right. And why? Like you, and, I'm, yeah. pick, I'm gonna pick. I Sal. can't wait for these answers. Right. It's I think it'll be hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. So I think it'll be great. So <laughs> we'll have we'll definitely have Taylor start yeah, working yeah. on it, and and then a maybe wet a- t-shirt contest. Who would you pick? <laughs> Justin, <laughs> come on. He's got the cakes. I got the. Yeah. I got the titties. He's got the. Yeah. <laughs> He's got Give the me what? some more milk and. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. Oh Jesus. So, too far. Excuse me, <laughs> dude. Excuse so, me. So you guys, you guys ready to hear something? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna read something to you guys. Um, so Laurel Hubbard uh, just set new high marks in the World Masters Games in Auckland Saturday, snatching 131 kilograms and lifting 149. In the clean and jerk for a total of 280 kilos. This is reported by the New Zealand wow. Herald. She broke, shattered all these records. Now, there's something else Wait. that's interesting about this. Uh, there's a catch to this. She used to compete in the sport as a man. Oh. Uh, yeah, so. so <laughs> and then what? the record skipped. Yeah, so. Uh, so this. So when she was uh, he. I don't know what the name was, but she competed in weightlifting. See, I'm completely pro. This is such I'm, fucking I'm bullshit. I'm completely pro oh, wow. that you can do that. I just don't think that you should be able to win awards that way. I just don't think. I think it's not fair. You know what's crazy? It's just not it fucking fair. No, it's not. You can cha- not. change your sex all you want. Of compete course. in sports. Compete with the men if you Identify want. Compete with, with whatever you want. you think you are. But if you, if you blow by everybody as the champion and you and you win, you just can't. No, dude, it's, it's not fair. You know what's funny to me about this? <clears throat> what's, funny, not, what's funny about this, there's a couple things. Well, our, now, pen- our penis and our vagina are not the only things that make us to There's so yeah. much going on hormonally. Our bone structure, our ligament, everything. Our it's fibers. It's testosterone. Yeah. Yes. But it, it's yes. here's the thing, like it's crazy to me that we've reached a point in society where we're so afraid of sp- like stating the obvious, uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. we just we're gonna fucking pretend, yeah. you know what I mean? We're gonna pretend like there's a new reality. Like it was, you know, she was a biological man who competed in weightlifting. Here's what I fear: got a sex change. Here's what I it's fear. Like, now we're convinced like, I, I can have a baby. Well, I what I what I fear from that is no, that what can't. that sends is now sends. You know, kids that are younger that are playing sports, seeing that as an advantage, and and that playing in the part of their decision of maybe even potentially wanting to do that. It could, you know, it could. Some people may say you're crazy, but I say now why if people it, that want to win start, really if bad. St- if yes, do some shit. Oh, okay. People already that are want to be professional athletes. M- at least ninety nine percent of them are completely very aware of that. It's not ideal for their body. They're doing things for well, those women that take male hormones and right. compete. Right. So so why would it be any different? Yeah. So and you know what's funny about Expect- this. Especially if you don't like fully identify with one sex or not. What's funny about this is people will actually debate, and I fucking love it when I hear them. They'll debate that it doesn't, oh no, it doesn't make a difference. She's on female hormones. Her testosterone has been blocked for, you know, five years or whatever. It doesn't make a difference. Bull fucking shit. If it, if it didn't make a difference, you would see a lot more transgender men competing and winning events too, but you don't. You're not, you're not saying, I'm not reading right now like, you know, John Smith just crushed powerlifting records. Used to be a woman. <laughs> right. Oh, not going to fucking that happen. Yeah, that's yeah. not. Uh... It's not going to happen. So it's, cra- it's it, but yeah. what's really crazy to me is that I don't see a lot of women getting pissed off. I, if I was a chick, I'd be pissed. Right. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, that's not Get fair. Get out of my sport. Yeah, that's not How fair. the hell did that happen? Yeah, that's yeah. not fair. That's like no. the ultimate sexism. That's like, you know, patriarchy <laughs> right there, dude. <laughs> it's just flipped. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's, yeah, it's weird. We rule. Yeah. Not, only, not only do we win at our oh shit, God, we win at dude. your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. You know what I'm How pissed off would you be, dude? It's fucked. Uh, if you were a girl, uh, I'd be so just, angry. Just stop uh, it. Anyway, it's- uh, it's, it's the extreme, bro. There we go. Again- We went one way. We were the other way 20, 30 years ago. We were so far the other way. Way and now we're on the other end of the spectrum. Now, hopefully, we find somewhere in the middle. It's just like I said, people are so afraid of offending anybody that now they're, is, they're going to just totally throw where away. Is this, where is this legal? This isn't legal in all, not all federations. This was, not all. This was international. Okay, yeah, but there's not some. I bet you there's some organizations uh, that this is not the World Master Games. They so I think if I'm not mistaken, the Olympics. It, I'm not sure. I won't. I won't even say it. But I think the Olympic. Weightlifting committee said that, yeah, this is cool. I really, 
it's shocking to me, but I, I really think they're just afraid of the backlash. Of course, yeah, they, of course. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. I, inside, especially now that they give the word out, you got to be thinking to yourself like, "Fuck, what, this is not fair, bro." Right? How, yeah, uh, and and you know what? There was it, uh, who was I don't remember her name, but there was a transgender woman that was fighting in MMA. The MMA, yeah, I hear about that. Did you too. see? That? So, have you seen those fights? No. But I heard it was not. She fucked him up. It was and she, not like. Uh, I mean, again, used to be a man, right? Yeah. Goes through the sex train change, then enters into MMA, which is a fight right. like, okay. as a female. Like, sorry, like a, yeah. hold on a second. Okay, yeah. there's definitely right. individual variances. Yeah. I'm. Sh- I know there's women that can beat up men. Okay, I'm sure Ronda Rousey could beat the fuck out of most guys or whatever. There's all these individual variances, but you take a hundred men and you take a hundred women you put them in a fucking room and you say alright everybody fight to the death <laughs> my money's on the guy <laughs> I'm gonna put money on I the mean, it's yeah it's just what we there's do there's nothing sexist about that it's I wanna make money well. right. you're saying like am I gonna bet I gotta, I gotta make my money we're just good at it I mean, we're good at fighting we're bigger stronger aggressive whatever yeah so I watched the videos of this transgender woman fighting these other girls and she wasn't like out techniquing them it wasn't like it was like skill it was like manhandling like just like brutal <laughs> yeah. just fists and blood yeah, just and holding them oh, down shit. and just <laughs> no oh, yeah I, I can't I don't, I don't feel good about dude, that dude I would be so angry if I was a I woman I just don't feel good you imagine you're like you're training hella hard right like, imagine being the athlete who's got a fighter uh, that's, yeah, not that's even, what I'm saying that's not cool <laughs> like you train your whole life you're like ready like fuck I'm gonna compete in this like alright here's your opponent and it's fucking you know Justin with a wig yeah <laughs> I come in and just, you're like holy shit it's like I'm ready Ready. Yeah, no, I'm not going to fight you, dude. Yeah. Can you imagine We're really? in my sports bra. I'm ready. No, <laughs> yeah. man. See, now people get mad. Yeah. Like, again, here's the deal. <clears throat> Do what you want, man. It's your body and whatever. I don't think, I think you should have equal rights across the board. But when it comes to competing, like there's a reason why men and women are separate in sports. There are no, there are no competitions or very few competitions, physical ones where men and women compete against each other because there's inherent in, in advantages. Do you think we'll eventually see women in the NFL? Uh, what? I mean, she'd have to be. Special. We had we She'd had some really girls on our team, team, like in high school. In high school, yeah, 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 yeah even but, having college every once in a while. But they didn't. They uh, didn't stay on the team. Like after it, it just became a thing where it was, it was tough because um, not at the highest level, dude. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, and it was like. Well, that, what I'm saying is like I agree with you, right? Yeah. I agree. Like just that that just seems ridiculous but so does what we're talking about right now well if one's good enough to make it god bless you but you know you gotta work your ass off dude i there's no way i could even sneeze about getting in the nfl and i played you know all the way through college and knew like the nfl is the one percent of the one percent that's the thing like at the highest highest level they're freaks at the highest highest level what you're dealing with are the best of the best within the gender of male very very aggressive yeah and the male gender physically is just stronger more aggressive taller you know bigger all that stuff so when you're dealing with the best of the best there the best of the best in the female category for for physical especially for sports like football and stuff like that it's not going to be at that level now there's individual variances because I, I like i said if i hand pick a team of women and i hand pick a team of men i can construct a female team that'll beat a male team of course, of course. but yeah no it's not fair dude it's yeah, not fair. No. So anyway, so this this woman competed as a man, won no records as a man, and then decided, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, was transgender. Now I'm going to compete again. I want to know what goes through a person's mind at that point. You know, don't you think to yourself, like, eh, it's not fair. Yeah, or maybe other things are more important in my life right now. Yeah. Like I'm going through a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm changing a lot. Like, that's, to me, I just feel like maybe competing is a distraction from this thing I'm trying to work on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're, you're completely changing. <laughs> or they're just like, I've dominated everybody in the male side. You know, let's let's try something that's what, else. So my fear, like I said, is that I feel like, you know, dude, people do a lot of crazy shit to win. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. A yeah. lot of fucking. It's, you're not. Shit. You're not. You're not wrong. And if and if you if we start Look to Lance Armstrong, if we yeah. glamorize it and we reward it and we talk about it and stuff like that, you, I guarantee there'll be some people that do it for those reasons. Yeah, maybe it's not for a majority the of them. Whatever. Exactly. But at the end of the day, like you, you somebody that will cross somebody's fucking mind, like somebody who's already feels like I said that doesn't really fully identify with my sex, or, I or felt maybe like, they're just super uh, obsessed with winning and. This right. Is, this happens all the time. People do crazy things to their bodies right. to win anyway. Yeah. And so I can see what you're saying. Somebody could be like, hey, look, I'm just going to compete as a woman because my yeah. chances are. And you know what happens in bodybuilding? Well, yeah. In bodybuilding, you have 
you have men that can't win in the, the the non-drug tested events, so they go into the natural events taking steroids so they can win. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah. whatever they can do to win, it's fucked up. It's just like this That's is true. where the lines get kind of blurred for me, you know, because like to each their own. You know, I'm, I'm all for celebrating, you know, you want to be, you know, in a different sex. That's totally great. You know, if that's what makes you happy and all that. But like when we start talking about this kind of stuff, it gets like, oh, I don't know. You know, yeah. it's just like, <laughs> I, <laughs> this I, is tough. I just think it's 100 percent. Like I said, well, it's taboo. Nobody wants to talk about it. But at the end of the day, so it's, 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 it's fucking it, happening. So it gets ridiculous. It is, it's yeah. like common. It's common sense. And people are they're taking common sense and they're throwing it away. And how uh, the fact that people even make arguments against this to me is, is silly. And again, I'd like to see. I mean, again, there's no female, you know, or excuse me, male transgenders winning at top levels because this isn't just a local weightlifting event like okay fine if it's a local you know right right Santa, uh, yeah, you know the yeah. the you know the gilroy it's you know the weightlifting standard championship. Of weightlifting yeah, yeah this is this was a these were records so now there's a record that's set in the master's category of weightlifting mm -hmm. and some you know biological females gonna look at that and be like okay that that's the record i have to beat yeah you know and it was set by a biolog by someone who was born a biological man who had all the advantages of mm -hmm. you know growing up and and then there's an argument to say, well, what if the hormones are changed before puberty? you know this isn't a case like that. this is a person who was a biological man right. through adulthood. Had all those changes. Yeah, that's even crazy. Developed crazier. all the muscle. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, when we've talked about, I mean, we don't even know about like uh, the whole hyperplasia thing and the right. ability for us to have created more. Have you been training as a male for 20, Bro, 30 years? I guarantee you, you take testosterone. Uh, you get, you remove testosterone from all men after they were adults, and they're still going to be stronger than women. They're still going to be stronger than the average women. It's just, it's just how just we the are. Frame of what's still there. Not just the frame. There's a lot of well, there's a lot of factors. There, yeah. There's a lot of different factors. There's central nervous system yeah. and how that fires and all these different things and. So anyway, hilarious. Yeah. I thought that was fun. <laughs> I, really I would love to. I would love to see the feminists get. I don't know why the feminists are so quiet. Yeah. It seems like such an obvious issue for feminists to be angry about, don't, doesn't it? I don't know. I, don't know. Dude, I would get that. pissed. Yeah. If, don't you think I'd be like, wait a minute? You know, you came over here, you transitioned, and now you're 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 taking opportunities away from these biological women who've been training their whole lives. And I, I don't know. I feel like it, it's a, it's a, it would be an issue that I would definitely be right. feel like the the female athlete would feel that way for yeah. sure. I definitely think that if you're a female and you're an athlete, you would would agree. I would I would think you know what I'm saying I guess mm. everyone teach their own whatever, but I think yeah. that most people would be like, yeah, that's kind of fucked up. This is what I love to do. This is my sport. I play. And then if I had to know, I'd go against somebody who was the world's gone mad, a man for thirty it's, years and then switched over. It's, it's different. Like, not yeah. really fair. The MMA one was just fucking. Hilarious. That's just yeah. I couldn't <laughs> watch just, that dude. Is, that's is, just just beating is she still in the women. MMA? I don't know. I, I'm pretty. I, I mean, I'm sure she won't be fighting the UFC because I'm pretty sure Dana White was not going to sign, you know, sign her. Although, you know, she's not that good, so I'm sure she went against like Cyborg. Uh, She'd probably get her ass kicked ooh, by Cyborg. That might be cool. That'd be kind of cool, huh? Yeah. Although, you know, it's, never mind. Like yeah. I said about yeah, Cyborg, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> questionable. <laughs> but, moving on, dog. No, yeah, yeah. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> bring on the. What kind of bird is it? It's I don't know. It's the awkward bird. Oh, you know what? Someone. <laughs> We know what I want to ask. Also, bring up here in the intro. Some, oh, someone asked what the qua is. <laughs> I've been asked that many, many times. Okay. Why is there an eagle sound, <laughs> and why do you guys call it Listen, qua? It, I invented all of it. I'll tell you. You it did. Goes, yeah. You did. This happened. This happened. It's uh, a long time ago. It was a long time ago. It was when we were. We just got in the new studio. And uh, I, rem I remember we were doing- Not in this studio, but the old- No, no the old one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the this first is, studio. And when we first got there, so we just left Doug's house. Yeah. So this is fresh into Mind Pump. We're only maybe 30, 30 to 50 episodes deep. And uh, we, we one of the things, it's the episode that we did where Doug talks about- uh, His spirit animal. His spirit animal. Mm -hmm. We get into the spirit animals- and that's when it started, right? So, yeah. that, and that's what gave you the. And then, well, because I was controlling the the Mind Pump IG page, and so I was putting up posts that were like Q and A, and so. And then the, you just pronounced the thought. It. Yeah, the thought process was like Q and A, and I like I kept writing like write your questions. I'm like, that's lame. Let me make the something you know like branding out of this or whatever. Like my brain, and I was like. Qua 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 qua, yeah. you know, <laughs> and then and then I just like said it on the podcast. I was like, yeah, qua, and then I added, you know, the qua, yeah, <laughs> and, and I did then, that. For and a then while. Doug did the bird. Then Doug, then Doug added the bird. Then Doug added the bird, and then it became it's a the thing. evolution man. So this is the last time I think we should. And ever, you say qua? I think we should ever tell the story behind it. Oh, we I can't tell. It should be a secret. Oh, yeah. 
I, I like that. I think it should be a secret from now well, on. Well, I like that it actually came up as a question. Like that means we've had people that have come on that haven't listened to. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have come on that don't haven't listened to the first like 400 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's crazy to me that there's still some people that go back and listen to the whole thing. We just had two people on the forum. I saw that this morning. That yeah. said, oh, finally caught up. Just finally caught it's up. Like 650 episodes. Yeah, dude. Yeah. How many hours of podcasting is that? You got to feel like we're we're best friends, right? Like I feel like I love you. You gotta love me, right? We gotta love each other. We've no, you've talked, yeah. you've let me talk in your ear for a fucking hour. We've hung out hours. and gone through times I've right? t- together. I've, you, I've talked, talked to you more than almost anybody else. Exactly, yeah. right? Isn't that weird? Right in your ear. Mm-hmm. We love you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Today's quad is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quad. Our first question is from DJ Cruz. How do you build a following on DJ social Cruz. media without being consumed? This is tough, dude. It's tough. It's the well, you know, it reminds me of this book. <laughs> <laughs> I've been reading. Please, please describe yeah. it for me. It's this book I've been reading. <laughs> yeah. I'll let Adam answer this because this, um, this is like this is like your your, your wheelhouse. <laughs> no, I want you to define it exactly. Dude, you have to you answer it. So these assholes have been giving me shit because <laughs> the and obviously I, a lot of our listeners may not know this because it sounds like a lot because I've said it probably a couple <clears throat> times on this show, but I've also said it several times when we were being interviewed That's or right, interviewing right, other right. people. So it's on like you know ten different it's out there. Yeah, so, yeah. it's like a ten different podcasts and then plus ours. It's, I've said a couple times. So I've referenced the book Irresistible. Now, for me, it's because I just think that this is such a great hot topic right now because nobody's really... I don't think there's a lot of people talking about it. And I think that Adam Atler with Irresistible and Dr. Andy Galpin with Unplugged are the first two people I feel like that have been really uh, addressing... They've recognized it as a, as a potential problem. Right, and they, and the way they, they articulate it in the book, I th- the, both those books, is incredible. And I never would have thought to look at it that way, and I think it's a, a very real thing. I know that... Um, I was somebody who didn't even have social media before. I didn't give a fuck about MySpace or Facebook or any of that stuff. Like, I just never was into that. It was not a thing for me. I, I talked to anyone who I really wanted to talk to that were my friends. Like, if we fucking text or we yeah. hung out, right? So that, to me, I never even really cared that much about it. The only reason why I got on was with the intention of building a business out of it. So I went from being someone who never did. Then I was doing it for for business reasons. And then I caught myself justifying I'm doing this for business reasons and realizing, like, holy shit, like, sure, I might be working, but I'm also, you know, scrolling too. You know it's what I'm saying? Weird. So it's not just... It's weird how, mm-hmm. you know, they compare it to drugs because of the effect it has on the brain and right. the oh, addictive properties. Hits. And there are there are withdrawal. Yeah. There are withdrawal symptoms from, you know, for those of you who are on the, on your, your apps all the time and on your phone all the time, you know exactly what that's like. Like, if you, you know the feeling you get when you drive off and you realize you forgot your phone? You know, and all of a sudden you're like, "Oh shit, I don't have my phone with me." Right? Like, Nobody can get a hold of me. That's ah! almost like a sign of uh, of withdrawal, right? Or I can't check my Instagram. I ch- can't check my Facebook. So yeah. it's weird. In fact, it just happened. We were sitting here uh, about to record this episode, and Doug, you know, real quick, he's like, "Hey guys, you know, uh, we need some questions for the Qua episode." <clears throat> episode, and so all of us get on our phones to check the Instagram page so we can find the Qua, and we all. All of us <laughs> yeah, got, got derailed. Yes. Yeah. We were yeah. checking other squirrel, shit. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. All of a sudden, 15 minutes later, Doug's like, hey, do you guys, have, you know, what's the matter? There's no questions or whatever? <laughs> yeah, there's 230 yeah. questions. Can you and pick And all of us are two? doing other shit. Yeah. It's really fucking crazy. It is. So that's why I, I like to talk about, there's, here's my thing. Like, uh, I'll never claim to be uh, the smartest or best guy in the fitness industry. But one thing that I've always done is like, as I go through process, this process myself of learning about myself and, and working on my relationship with food, exercise, emotionally, self-image, all the things that we talk about, you know, there's there's moments where I feel like are very like aha or big in 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 this journey in this process, and this is a this is one for me right now that wow this could be very easy I can uh, justify all the consumption of social media. Well, and- <clears throat> yeah, to, to piggyback on that, I, I saw immediately how it was affecting my relationship with my wife and, and how we recognize it even like as, you know, 
phones, these, these like it got more and more um, like we got consumed with them. And like I would look at stuff before I went to sleep. Like I never did that before. It started to get like the iPhones got a lot better. And um, it, it just became this thing. Like we kind of joke about it. Be like, yeah, at some point we'll be like just looking at our phones and then putting them down and all that and like kind of joking about it. And then realize that really fucking happened. And then it was like I wasn't talking to her. She wasn't talking to me. You know, I'm on my phone, like doing all this business stuff that I thought was important, which is really just, you know, scrolling left to right and all these different things. You just hit something key is that it was the iPhone was like the real big when you started getting like, that so was it, man. think about how our text message, even our threads are right now. You can even like, li- like if Sal says something, I can like it, yeah, you can like it or do an emoji attached to it, or you could put, you know, and so now, you, and you can have group conversations, lots of people. So there's all these things that are feeding yeah. this, this dopamine rush, right? From all oh, this is awesome. Oh, he liked this. Oh, she disagreed. So you could have so much going on that you, I mean, when we start, pulls when, you away. when the first phones came out, it was like the analog, you know, like, yeah. and the text yeah. message, you had to go three times at the Maybe button. That flip and the one. one. That was yeah. It was cool. like, no, it was lame. You just said something short, got your point across, whatever. It, it, you'd rather call them. But now, like the whole texting. People the, get irritated the, when you call them now. No, they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no. You, no. This better be call- important. Yeah, why don't you text yeah. me? Let me know you're going to call me. Right. Uh, so <clears throat> building a following on social media requires a few things. One of the things it requires is consistency. Now, that also is what makes it difficult to not become consumed because – If I'm really focused on building my social media page, let's say I'm a personal trainer and I want to build an online coaching business and I want to use a platform like Instagram, you know, one of the key things that you can do, one of the fundamental things that you need to do to build your page is to post consistently and regularly. So, okay, three posts every day or four four posts every day or two posts every day or whatever, but do them every single day. Just be dogmatic about it and be consistent. That's one of the best things you could do to build not just a, a base of followers, but also build val- value, which is more important to the followers that you do get. Now, the, the problem with that, again, is that you're on there, right? You're on there a lot, and it's giving you excuse uh, for, you know, to be on there, and it, you can become consumed with it. So one thing that I <clears throat> do that I should be better at, or I'm trying to be better at, is I schedule it. Hmm. So if I know I'm scheduling it in the morning, I do one post, at this time, at night, I do another post at this time, and I make it just if about we, that. If Everything we were really is- organized, if we were really organized, what we would all do, and I wish I would do this too, we, you could plan out that at the beginning of the day or even at the beginning of the week, you can actually plan all your posts. So in a perfect world, and this is why this is a weakness of ours and why we yeah. struggle with this. It's organizational issues. Right. This is a time management thing, 100%. And everybody in this room, if that was a weakness we'd, uh, that we had in common, that would be one of them for sure. And so I think people that are really organized and really good about this is you work hard for one day and you plan out all these timed posts and everything and the content that's going to go, which would actually take some time and probably isn't easy for a lot of people the first time. But if you did that, that would be the ultimate because then you could yep. just you could just have it set to where it hits that drops. And now the drawback of that is the engagement side. Right, is the engagement side. Half of why why people follow and grow and come on is, and that's probably the biggest mistake I see pages, including myself, I did at one point. So I initially spiked up to like 20,000 people and then I got distracted and busy with other stuff about Mind Pump. I, it was like we, I used it first to get enough people listening to me to that I could get them to listen to Mind Pump. And then once Mind Pump, catapulted beyond my Instagram. I just kind of like whatever about it. And I, I started to see people fall off completely. And I just was just posting and I wouldn't talk to people. Well, I got back to engaging and all that. And then, the, and then right away, it started to ramp back up. So engagement with your audience and talking to the, your people are the most important thing. I mean, why I'm, I, I might follow you because you do cool posts, right? And you, or you have cool photos, but if I'm going to read your content and shit and I'm going to talk to you and you have my attention, like you got to engage with them for sure. Yeah. So I, so for me personally, so I'll, I'll give you an example of what I did yesterday. So typically what I'll do is what I've been trying to do lately is I try to come in to work if I can early. And the two things that I try to accomplish before we all get, you know, to mind pump work is I try to do one social media post and uh, lately I've also been trying to write a blog. And so far I've been relatively consistent. Now knowing that and I do that, then I tell myself that if I do check my social media, it's literally uh, maybe a few times a day, check, engage, and get off. Now unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way. Again, like I said earlier, we, we got, we got kind of stuck. The second time 
that I'll try and get on there is at night. So like last night, I get home late. Um, I've been, I've you know, obviously I'm kind of fighting the cold. So I made myself some of the Four Sigmatic Reishi, which I love, by the way. Totally calms me down, relax. It's also good for me, my immune system. So I make that and I make it hot. So it's kind of like a tea. And I sit there and I give my, and I do my second post and I allow myself enough time on there if I finish my post to finish my tea. Once I'm done with my tea, and it's just a, it's just a, a physical representation of like a timer. You know what I mean? It's like, a, it's like an hourglass for me. Mm. When I'm done with my, my Four Sigmatic Reishi tea last night, I told myself, when I'm done with this, I'm done with this post. And I was. I finished my, 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 my tea or whatever, my, my Reishi, turned off my phone, turned off the electronics, and, you know, and then I had 30, 45 minutes before going to bed. And, and so it's just, it's, it reminds me of you know, managing food intake or anything else before you get to the state where it becomes natural. You got to kind of set the structure. Yeah. Uh, you got to have a structure first. Right. I set the boundaries. And I yeah. think that um, like those books you mentioned, that's these are the only type of books that are even like addressing this is like with urgency, like this is getting out of control. And it's like inherently, I think people listening, they feel that, like how much time they spend on the phone and how much time it's distracting them from like real life activities and right. engagement with like real human beings. And, uh, I think we all kind of know it's getting to that point. Like you really have to check it as like, you know, where do I set up my boundaries? How do I, uh, create, you know, a healthier relationship with this process? Well, the behavioral addiction part is so obvious when you talk about what with Sal, how we open this, right? I mean, you, we, it, we were, tr we were focused trying to get work done, yeah, and literally at work, at work, yeah. right? Literally distracted, through, and and just, of course, we're all open and honest about it. Right? Like, oh, I totally got fucking sidetracked. Oh, so did I, so did I. It's like, yeah. fuck, dude, that's crazy. Like that wouldn't happen. Crazy. That shouldn't happen, you know. But that's because it, it's it, that's how it starts. It's like a slippery well, slope. I also right? liked, uh, yeah, I also like drama's approach to it. He had an, an, an additional phone that was, you know, he would just designate. Um, completely for business related things, emails and social media accounts. I just don't know if that's the move or not. I might actually try that at some point. We'll see. Yeah, I thought I thought about the same thing. I don't know if that would help me or not. I know yeah, that uh, just had more. <laughs> yeah, I just I options. just I just think that at the same token too. Okay, uh, when you're trying to build something, okay, there's gonna be your your balance is gonna be out of uh, you're gonna be out of balance regardless, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. So. You know, we we talk about how important that is. I I only started cutting back on my social media after it got to a point to where the business is up and running. If we were still not. I'd be the first one to admit that I'd be probably on it morning till night, all night long. Like we just because I'm trying to build something, and I would know a hundred percent this is not healthy. This is not ideal for me. I'm probably my relationships are suffering. All that did happen to me, but I I communicated that with like my, my partner heading into that, saying like, listen, you know how I get when we are I'm focused on one thing. I'll get tunnel vision on it. It's not a lack of me loving you or not being there. It's not. This is just let me get here. We'll get to a place, and then once we have more time, I'll carve it. And that's. Just, to me, I think that's uh, you've got to understand that too, because I know Sal, you're I know you're really ramped up your post lately, and you can see you can see by the traction that your your Instagram is in comparison to all of, all of our pages right now. Mm -hmm. You're doing almost double the ads as I am. You're also doing two to three times the posts as I am yeah. too. It's that frequency and making sure you're engaging with your people, and you're naturally going to add. And I'm I'm a terrible example now. If you're someone who's just now coming on board, because we had already once I got to the point where I, like I said, I said Mind Pump is bigger than my Instagram. I just said like, okay, I'll just I'll just manage it, and that's what I do now. Now I manage it. I post. I talk to my people when I can, but it has not. It's not a priority. If you're trying to grow your social media, yeah, you're gonna fucking live on that for a while. Mm -hmm. You're gonna live on it a lot, and you, yeah. and the more you do, the more you post, the the better It'll off you're gonna off. be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Our next question is from Godzilla one 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 two. Periodization within the same week versus periodization for weeks on end. Excellent. Honestly, I know I, we structure it a certain way, but it's, well, there's always there's always some form of periodization going on, right? right? And and so they've done studies on the groups like this. Yeah. They've done groups like this mm. that have periodize it uh, weekly, and then they do ones where they don't change anything for like four, to, and then which what groups make the biggest difference. And really in the studies, if you're periodizing it at all, like if you're making sure you're, whether you're manipulating within the week or every week, whatever, 
you're fine. Yeah. I mean, you. I would Successful. do my my recommendation to somebody would be do what you like to do and experiment with both because maybe your body responds better to one way than the other, or maybe you tend to gravitate towards a modal a way of training already. So doing the opposite is obviously going to send a, a, a louder signal, right, to, for growth or change. So I think that that would be my advice to someone. I, I think when you're speaking in terms of uh, so here's the thing. I prefer <clears throat> periodization uh, weekly. Weeks. So I, I yeah I prefer staying in a particular type of training, uh, you know, tempo and rep range and whatever for two to four weeks before I move to the next one for a few different reasons. One of which is it takes me typically it takes me a, at least a week or so before I feel like I get the central nervous system adaptation happening. So what I mean by that is. You know, if I always train low reps... Well, especially with big movements, dude. Yeah. Like big, with the big gross motor movements, it's yeah. like... It's well, one thing to change up, periodize, like, some fucking bicep exercises and shit. Well, that's the thing. Like, if I train... Let's say I train low reps, all the, like, for three weeks. I'm just training maximal strength for the next three weeks. When I switch to high reps, the first week, man, I'm just getting enough endurance to even fucking do the set. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Then it's the second and third set where I really can push myself and I see the changes... It's also helps me to it really helps me uh, identify what I'm getting exactly out of this training you know, right. style and like modality. What, yeah, what 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 exercises am I currently doing right now, and what rep range is actually making the biggest? This is change. how I identified with myself. It's hard to do that when you do that Dude, all. This is how I identified with myself that when I lifted heavy, like really really heavy, I I would get this kind of dense hard feel and look to my muscles, and if I and if I did you know, higher rep kind of pumping, you know, movements or whatever, I noticed that I'd get this fuller, rounder look to my muscles. And I, I would notice these specifics, and they're subtle, by the way. So to the average person, they wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I can because I'm very in tune with my body, but I wouldn't be able to do that or I wouldn't, at least I wouldn't be able to, to you know, connect it. it yeah. yeah, to connect it to a type of training if I changed my workout every single time. Which this yeah. was me. I was this guy. Uh, like I was known for this. In uh, fact, yeah, I I've used to say day. this. I used to say, I've never repeated the same workout ever <laughs> once. Yeah. Like I used to say that. Like that for years I said that because and that confused the fuck. Right. It was muscles. it was really and, and and that's what it was, was I was constantly flipping and changing everything. And it worked well for me. And because of that, and then there's some benefits to that. I was I was very mobile. I was I was fast. I had endurance. I was strong, but I was not great at any of those. Yeah, I was good at all of them because I was constant. I never yeah. let my body specialize long enough in a phase for me to get really, really and see the major steps. So when I really started to periodize and I started to break it up like in our phases and maps, when I started programming like that, oh, pff, huge difference, yeah. Yeah. huge difference. But with also with that comes the pitfalls, because then I also struggled with. Sticking in phases, wanting to stay there because I see the chain. Oh man! Also, I start living heavy. I, get, I see the denser. This, all this stuff is happening in my yeah. body. So then I fall in love with it. Find myself fucking around with it for way too long. I went. Then- I went some somewhat similar in a trap of where like you know you get comfortable in in, in a certain style for for quite a bit. And so uh, for me, like I would get into this this sort of rhythm of like more functional style training for like way too long. And like really like the benefits of that though is like building up all this work capacity in that direction. Right. But then I became really shitty at like things that I normally used to be good at. Right. And so, um, yeah, so a little bit of a a difference there, but like, I, I, I'm definitely like in kind of more leaning on what Sal was saying as far as like, I want to be able to measure that, but then move forward. So I'm still, I'm still progressing, but I can identify, okay, what's really happening with my body. And that usually takes, uh, you know, at least three, 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 four weeks for me to, to even like realize there's the mental component too, of, of, you know, knowing what the intent is and how to have the intention in your workouts when you're in a particular phase so if I take a, the average person who, you know, let's say buys one of our programs and wants to follow the workout, there's a, there's a mentality and an, an, and an intent that goes into a phase one type of workout or a phase two type of workout or a phase three type of workout. So if I take that person and Monday is phase one, Wednesday is phase two, and Friday is phase three, it's, it's more difficult for them to get in the intent to really understand like the purpose and to feel what they're supposed to feel with the workout versus them me saying you're going to practice phase one for three weeks. You know, by that third week, they start to feel like I'm getting fucking good at this, and then they switch. Right. Versus the like changing all the time 
where, look, when you're doing a phase three, so phase three is more supersets, it's higher reps, it's faster pace, totally different intent. It's a different mentality going into your workout. Which is why, obviously, weights are going to get reduced. You're going to, you're not going to be nowhere near as strong because you're not giving yourself rest periods, higher repetitions. It's a totally you, different you don't, And you got to be okay with that because that's another thing. Yes. This is a mental fuck that happens yeah. to people is you should, you know better. You've been training in a six to eight rep range or a low rep range for long and you know you need to transition out. You start doing your, you know, 15 reps of chest press and now your dumbbell weight is cut in half or your barbell weight's cut in half. And, and you're an like, ego check. it is an ego check and you do it one time and then you're like, fuck that, I'm going I'm back going to back it. To I'm going back to him heavy ass way. I know. If what, you're writing this. my life story? I yeah. done, right. I, this is how I, that's why I, I speak so passionate about it because I know motherfuckers be doing this right now. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, else everyone would be changing looking badass in the gym when I walk in there. Still people look soft as fuck yeah. because they're not programming right. Soft you know? as fuck. They do, this is for or the same. Yeah. They look the same. Sometimes yeah. I shouldn't say yeah. soft. Not all of them look soft as fuck, but a lot of them look the same and they're not. their body's yeah. not changing. And I know they're working hard, but they're working hard at the same things and their body's so efficient uh, at it. At the end of the day, do what works best for you. But ultimately, if I had to pass uh, my opinion, most people will probably do best if they stay in a phase or in a periodization sequence or whatever for at least a few weeks before moving to the next one. I agree. As long as you keep an eye on the pitfalls that's because it. that's the only thing that comes with that. Next up is Paleo Practitioner. Are you familiar with Gretchen Rubin's personality framework? If so, which traits are you guys? What the I fuck have no is idea that? what that is. What is that? Yeah. I know I didn't know either, so I, I had. I guess I'm just gonna read it off, and then we can kind of like uh, identify which. Well, one tell us why to before you. you're reading to it. Can you? Are you just gonna read it? So no, it sounds like. It's, I mean, it, it sounds like it's one of those like. It feels like is it one of those tests where they tell you like you're the fucking this or you're the. Oh, leader, is this like the, what Josh Trent was talking about? Was it? I, Josh I Trent. It, it is. It is. It is what he was. Was that like on your guys' podcast? Oh, that's right. It's another one of those yeah, ones where they invite there. you. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't realize you we've guys, left you that many times. I know times. you guys have really, you know, spawned off and created a new that. thing. It it uh, yeah. it makes us like you more. Dude. Hurts my feelings. What do they call it? Like distances. I heard Sal uh, on the Sal yeah. on the phone with CBS yesterday, dude, talking to them about something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. They that's want cool, to start us. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm talking to Fox. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> whatever. No, no right, let's hear. Let's hear. So okay. So Gretchen Rubin. So. It says in a nutshell, upholders is one of the, uh, uh, what do you call these? Personality frameworks. Personality frameworks, okay. Uh, Respond readily to outer and inner expectations. Um, Questionnaires is another one. Question all expectations. They'll meet an expectation if they think it makes sense. Um, Rebels resist all expectations, outer and inner alike. And then there's obligations. Oblig- obligers? Obligers. 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 <laughs> God, I can't read. Uh, meet outer expectations, but struggle to meet expectations they impose on themselves. Interesting. Oh, I'm for sure obliger then. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you- Sal's a questioner. Really? What yeah, is it? That's, what they, that's what, yeah, in the question they actually identified you as that. So they said oh, they I was did. a questioner? Yeah, yeah. They said what is the questioner again? So the questioner, uh, question all expectations. They'll meet an expectation if they think it makes sense. Oh, yeah. 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 You know what? One of the, one of the, what do you I think have you no are? idea what I am. You don't know what you are? No. Really? I think you're, you're, the, 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 you you're, the, re, you're the rejector one, the one that rejects everything. <laughs> yeah, you're like, the asshole. Like, yeah, reject first and then yeah, what I'll is it? it? What is it? What's it? What, read yeah, it. so the rebels resist yeah, all rebel. expectation. Okay, yeah, I think you're, you're the rebel. Right. Yeah. I think Justin's the rebel. I think I'm the obliger, and I think you're questioner. the questioner. You know, it's funny. Uh, That's interesting. This made a diff. There was a couple times in school where it was difficult for me because they would tell me to do something, and if I didn't see the purpose in it, I just refused. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you need yeah. to you need to memorize this, and it's like why? Yeah, because I feel there's some of it. You know, some of those, and you know, each one of those, like, there's so, a little bit. D- Doug, do you know anything about this guy? I feel like this is something you would know. I know nothing about it. Okay, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. So you know what's funny about these tests is I, it's like they they create them. Well, you know what it reminds me of horoscopes. <laughs> Which one do you feel is right? You? That's the only. I mean, uh, and, I, and and that's not like a knock on people that like. I'm sure there's some great some psychology sure Gretchen there. Rubin knows stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, doesn't it though? It's like I don't if you, know. If you read it, uh, the hor- horoscope's been around for thousands of years, so <laughs> it stood the test of time, Gretchen. I don't know if your things is effective. Do you guys? Do you guys fit your 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 horoscope? horoscope? Do I do. Your, I totally do. Sometimes, do. yeah. Like sometimes I'm like, oh come on. Yeah, no, for me sure. too. My, so yeah. I'm Aquarius, and it's the yeah. weird thing about it is if you read, anytime I read, I'm always like, get out of here, and I read it, yeah. and it's always like describing my personality to the, to the T. So weird. Yeah. yeah. It's so, and you're a Scorpio, right? Yeah. 
So yours is like, what is a Scorpio supposed to be like? Yeah, we'll look it up. You don't even know. know. Very I'm of course sexually I, of course fiery I know. or something. Of course I know. Right. <laughs> I think I think that's why I mean, you know just girls that always come up to How, you. I'm totally a you know, Scorpio. What's funny is that everybody cool. loves their own sign because each yeah. sign like uh, talks to you well. Uh, right, I got it. I got He's it. a Scorpio. Yeah. I can tell. I'm so proud to yeah. be. I, I got it. I got it. Okay. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> Nobody says you're such an Aquarius. Here's the positive. Nobody tells me that. Here's the positive traits of a Scorpio: focused, brave, balanced. <laughs> Faithful, <laughs> Whatever, dude. ambitious, intuitive, yep. jealous, All the above. and secretive. Jealous? No. Adam's very jealous. No, yeah. I'm not. Oh, dude, one time I was fucking texting that other fitness guy. Oh, you're, right. <laughs> you're so right. He was so pissed. Yeah. Uh, let's see what a... Cor- I'm going to look up mine and see what those are. Justin, what are you? I'm an Aquarius too, bro. Oh. Yeah, we share, we share the same horror. Scope, scope, yeah, yeah. Read me your guys. Uh, What's that's all? That's all my. That's my negative in my or my. That's was my, that all your stuff? You just gave me the what was uh, bad about me or what was good no, about. No, that was all, those are the traits. Oh, those. Oh, they don't have like a. Normally, they have I like mean, a I could pair. go in. I can go into a whole thing, but you know, we don't want to do that. Who cares? Mm. Uh, <laughs> let me see. He's so a wait till we get to mine. Positive qualities of Aquarius: <laughs> truthfulness, just curious, hmm. yeah. affectionate. I love you guys. Personality, <laughs> just. Frank and imaginative. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's look at the negative qualities. Uh-oh. Unpredictable, yeah. detachment, tendency to go off track, and inefficiency. Oh, these are right on. Oh, my God. That's weird. <laughs> Bro. Us. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. The Aquarius-born people must be careful of any kind of addiction. Interesting. Now, do you have- do No. You, I, yeah. Have you ever tried to- uh, Look up like so. Pair our personalities, so you can do. They do this thing like matches. <laughs> how do we match with Adam? Yeah, squ- yeah. yeah, yeah. See yeah. how Aquarius and Scorpios match together. Oh, Aquarius. Okay, Aquarius. It's a menage a trois. Compatible yeah. compatibility with. Uh, hold on, compatibility with Scorpio. Let's see what it says here. This is so fun. This is weird. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. This, you know what's funny? Oh, I'm I'm curious. I really do. You know how many people? Do you know how, many people, do you know how many people do this when they first? Meet I used uh, to. like another person they're I dating. Like that matters. After the first time someone introduced me to this, I'll never forget. It was like I was 25 years old. This girl was, that I was hanging out with, she sends, she sent, she shows me this, right? And I'm was like, Was it just because it like you resonated so, so hard? So hard. You're just like, so Yeah, hard. that is me. Right. And then I, then what, 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 fuck, what really fucked with me was then I went back and went, Okay, if this is real, let me go back. And I went back to all the girls. <laughs> That I dated and their birthdays, and I and looked it them all up. All played out, and the all same. the stuff that we had problems in our relationship was like right onto their sign. But like, your uh, girl's a Scorpio too. Yeah, we're one day apart. Aren't are Scorpios compatible with Scorpios? So they it's Double either stinger. they say it's either absolute disaster or it's incredible fireworks. That's what okay. they say. So so here's the Scorpio mm-hmm. and Aquarius. So if me, you, and Justin. If we all decided to <laughs> make all, it real, we're all, you know yeah. what I mean? Like well, we, we got kinda, drunk. We kind of are dating. We're just not, no sex. We just got really drunk. Uh, contact between a Scorpio and an Aquarius can be truly intense. Ooh. As as squaring signs, they should have a very troublesome contact, but the sign of Scorpio exalts the ruler of Aquarius, Uranus. I don't know why they have Venus in there. <laughs> why are we Uranus? Hold on, hold on. I don't like this. Yeah. Like these this signs, this is the best part, these signs combined represent the ultimate sexual- Put your stinger in Uranus. Oh, they, they represent the ultimate sexual freedom, a place with no restrictions or taboos. Yeah. Wow. That, yeah. Is that not us or what? Well, if, <laughs> this is what's happening. <laughs> What the fuck? I don't know. Hey, uh, if there's ever <laughs> it sounds spicy though. If there's, <laughs> if there's ever like a like a, like some kind of like nu- yeah. nuclear attack while yeah. we're at work, I mean we would have really hot uh, yeah. you know <laughs> action together. Because yeah. you know what's funny is we, we have this cube that we've uh, built for the podcast, yeah. but it's probably bomb proof. This thing we built it to be <laughs> sounds like it. I believe so. It. Like shit goes down. You cannot hear my scream. We're stuck in this room. We're still podcasting hard. Yeah. yeah. Next question is from. Black All Training Nutrition. How would you alter frequency of MAPS aesthetic if you were running it on gear versus natural? Oh, so I've actually had a lot of people asking me this, like what's the difference in training uh, between somebody who's on gear versus someone who's natural? At, mm. Now, now the bottom line is this. Well, really, just recovery. Yeah, right? the rules still apply, though. They do still apply. It's the same, bo- it's and, the same stuff. And the individual variance is still going to be crazy. That's right. Of course. Because there's going to be genetic freaks that recover faster, can handle more volume, don't get achy joints, don't get as inflamed. Like, so 100% natural, not natural, there still is this this gray, huge gray area of a major individual variance within mm-hmm. both those categories. But- 
when you are, it, it what it does is it allows you to get away with more, basically. So that's if you it. took you natural versus you on, you know, that's where you could, and I flirted with that, with those lines of how much volume I was in. I was, that's training seven days a week inside the gym. So, and I worked, now I worked up to that volume. I didn't start at seven days. Yeah, it wasn't gym. like you just got on gear and like, boom, seven days in the gym. Exactly. And that would be a mistake too, because it, like you said, the same rules still apply. It still would, it would still behoove me to actually just add a little bit of volume over, over time versus all of a sudden going balls to the wall. So that could be a mistake that you can make and the steroids will, will respond still well. And so it'll be, it'll be, you'll, you'll misjudge it or miscalculate it. So that's the thing you got to be careful with like, okay, I'm going to take gear and then do something. It's like, well, now you now you're playing with like this the, you're playing a new game that you've never played before and then and you're playing by different rules because you you now have got this in there. Why don't you play it first natural? And that's why I, I would tell anybody who hired me on for coaching is, listen, I'm not anti-testosterone or taking steroids at all. How could I be? But at the same time, I think there's a smart way to do this like Let's train you correctly naturally. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's learn about your body, about how it recovers and it responds to certain adaptations. Like, let's get, let's figure out what that is. And then, if you really want to take this to the next level and we want to go pro and do all that shit, by all means, who am I to tell you not to? So, one of the mistakes I see with people when they get on gear is because they now can do more, they do do a lot more, even though it's not necessarily benefiting them. So yes, you know, let's say somebody trained, you know, uh, full body three days a week, did focus sessions on the off days, like we we have in Maps Aesthetic, and then they get on gear, and now they're like, oh cool, I'm gonna throw in an extra full body workout because I think my I know my body can handle it. What you need to understand is recovery doesn't necessarily mean adaptation. So you, although you may recover faster. Right. You may not, it doesn't necessarily mean you should push it to that limit because it's not going to necessarily mean you're going to adapt better. Yes, you'll get away with it, but you, you, you may just be doing more workouts for That's nothing. That's the problem is you actually, you know, let's be, let's be honest. If someone took steroids, all of a sudden ran maps black and they full throttled it seven days a week, never took days off, you're going to build some muscle. Sure. 100% you're going to build some muscle. Sure. You're going to build a lot of muscle actually, but then you're going to hit a hard plateau. And when you hit that hard plateau... It, there only, only, there's only one direction to go at that point. Yeah. Like you just don't have more, more time and days, and there's a much smarter approach. Yeah, basically, if you, what you want to understand with, uh, with anabolic steroids is you just can do more. So if you're, whatever you're doing now, that's your genetic, you know, uh, you know your recovery, your adaptation, that's, your, that's what your makeup allows you to do. You throw steroids on top of that, you could just do more of that. Right. Doesn't necessarily mean, though. I want to be clear. Doesn't necessarily mean that doing more is necessarily ideal. Is going to give, yeah, yeah. ideal yeah. or give you faster results. The problem is, it's hard to judge. You know, because here's the thing: like, if you're natural and you're like, oh, I'm going to get on a, a cycle of gear, and oh, now that I'm on a cycle of gear, I'm going to add two extra workouts, and then you gain, you know, 12 pounds of muscle. Was it the extra workouts? Was it the gear? Was it both? Would that have happened had you not? added the extra workouts right. like you know because i you know i've done this with supplements like some supplements will improve recovery you know uh certain amino acids i've noticed you know maybe if i'm pushing myself to the limit i've done this with athletes and i've shown them like and it, this is why i think it's so important because it, almost every time i've done this it always surprises the athlete how shredded how badass they actually end you up looking without it, without it. Yeah. And then it's like, and then like I said, like, yeah, absolutely. If you, if you were a kid and I've had this amateur comes to me, I look at his physique and I tell him like, yeah, you have a good structure for this sport. You can do well, whatever like that. Like, yeah. And you know, oh, I have the aspirations of being a pro. Okay. What steroid cycle? Like, Wait, well, we don't need to. We're at the amateur level right now. You can go win an amateur show all natural in IFB in the NPC easily. You really yeah. can but you just got to be you got to you got to have the package this if you had that but then I'll take them and then I'll get them in shape then they see themselves for that and they're like oh shit like yeah. I've had guys who were, had every plan every intent to get on get on a cycle and run and then they end up seeing what they can actually get to what they can get their body to perform like when they eat correctly and they program right and it's like oh shit you know what I'm saying like and, if, and at that point if you want to go to the next level I understand that's fucking to each their own, right? Which is interesting to listen, you know, to you describe that and that entire process because I, I remember us being at lunch and um, uh, this guy mentioning a, a certain like uh, uh, you know, pro maker, let's just say, uh, out there <laughs> that, um, you know, th the first go to out of anything is the drug schedule. You're right. Like that's that. This is what everything is. Oh, that is, is. so. Oh, that guy that trains pro bodybuilders? Yeah. Pro looks like a meatball? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
that that is the most common thing theme in in the bodybuilding circuit is yeah. I mean everybody that was what everyone was talking about that's what I, I was like when I was backstage it was always about oh what are you running what are you running this right. and that you know and everybody is talking about what they're stacking on top of what and it was just like whoa dude like this, we're amateurs right now are you kidding me like you don't need all that gear for that like mm. it's crazy so that but that's what's happened because science has come along we have learned about all these different hormones and steroids and shit that we can take to get better faster recovery and and metabolize fat faster and do all this cool shit that we didn't know before and so everyone's stacking it it's like whoa dude now in your body in your body actually stops responding uh, to uh, these yeah, anabolic gets hormones, yeah, it gets adapted to that like anything else. Yeah, it starts to get adapted. And the the other thing too is if you take, you know, let's say you're training again, let's say you're training five days a week, and you're working out hard, and somebody gives you anabolic or you start taking anabolic steroids, you're still going to be increasing, you know, the the stress uh, or the the volume I should say you're putting on your body because you're going to get stronger also. So it's not like all your variables stay the same, so you have to throw more on there anyway. Even if you kept the workout the same, you're just going to be lifting more weight. That's another variable that you've increased. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily have to think to yourself like, oh, shit, now that I'm on gear, I need to add all kinds of extra work to maximize it. My recommendation is this, and I've trained you know, clients and athletes uh, who've taken anabolics. I tell them, don't change your workout. Get on it. Don't change your workout. Let's see what happens first, and then right, we start playing around because- People, I've seen too many times people will go on gear, change the workout right away, which by the way, gear takes a while, you know, steroids take a while to give you some response anyway. So if you take it today, you ain't going to feel it for at least a couple weeks, at least, right? You're not going to start to notice really. So, uh, you know, people will change the workout right away and almost throw themselves into a state of overtraining before they even give it a chance to kind of, to kind of catch up. But at the end of the day, again, uh, it's really, uh, it just lets you do more. Or lets you get away with more with your workouts. So, that being said, go to YouTube, Mind Pump TV. We post new videos all the time. It's all different content. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.